afternoon, America. Wow. Yeah, like a good morning like Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah. Yeah. I liked it. To start doing the whole Dwight speech. Um from uh the you know, and the Michael speech from from the office. <laughs> uh but welcome to uh Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan Wiegand. You've heard his voice. If you're watching the video, you unfortunately saw his face. It's Logan Stone. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Uh, usually it's the hairline they go after, but hey, the face is even better. Um, what's going on, Jordan? How you doing? I'm doing okay, I guess. Um, got a lot to talk about. A lot to get into today. Uh, looking forward to talking this, but how how are you doing, Logan? I know you've had a lot of trouble Oof. with vehicular transports and just getting places. Mm. How are you doing? Oh, much better now. Uh, smooth ride, Toyota Corolla 2021, uh, sponsored by Toyota. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, we're actually sponsored Legally by Legally, have to say no, that we have not out. been sponsored by them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next in tires. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, no, I'm good. Uh, the car gets me places now, and that's exciting. Um, I'm a little bit more broke than I was, but not too bad. I, got, I had to trade in the Jeep, and now I just got to make car payments, which isn't fun, but I, I had to. Jeep paid off? Yeah, completely. Paid oh, off. okay. So I just traded in for, for some cash. They gave me quite a bit of cash. Um, so I traded that in and bought Paul Ariel. I mean, it's been wild. It's been a it's been a fun little couple of days. No, but uh, I'm doing well too because City won the Prem, uh, the Premier League. Uh, so excited oh. about that. Um, and I know Jordan's excited about that as well. So um, if we you know, just I'm just off, you know who City. I'm excited for, right? I'm excited for this guy to move. Team. Like the phenom guy, right? He's like the LeBron James of soccer. <laughs> Did you see his uh, bio, Jordan? You know, it never actually said Chelsea on there. Oh, it didn't? Before. Yeah, they, okay. there were screenshots that showed that he never had it on there. He had a profile picture with Chelsea in it that no. he has removed. Um, but he usually does kind of going into the summer, I think, at times. So I don't know. I, I do think he'll be leaving. Mm-hmm. I hope he kind of leaves because um, I, I, he, the fans don't really like him, unfortunately, even though if you look at his stats, he's better than most of their attackers per 90 minutes. And it's at this point, it's just cut the losses, move on, get some regular playing time as we get ready for World Cup 2022. If you had a wish for him, where like league wise, I'm I'm not going to get it into teams because we'd have to look it all up. But league wise, where are you hoping he ends up? I still think he can be a Premier League player if he wants to be a mid table Premier League player, top end Premier League player, just not like a Chelsea City player. Uh, Leeds Brentford. I would go higher. I, I think I'd go higher. I think he could be like Everton. A, a Villa, West Ham, <laughs> Everton. Yeah. Everton in the heyday, right? Frank. Tottenham. Um, um, Conte, Tot. Yeah, sure. But I don't know. With Sun up there, I, yeah, I, I, I just don't know don't how that works. Like, yeah. They play a whole different system. But like, I think like a West Ham, a Villa, a Everton, any of those type of teams, I think can be good for him. Leeds could, but I just think that with Aronson potentially going there, that uh, that that would kind of eat into some of Pulisic's or Aronson's time. So <clears throat> Arsenal would be fun. Just go across London. I think my dad would love it. I think uh, Germany would be a good fit for him still, and I think some Italian teams could be a really good fit for him. Inter Milan, AC Milan, something fun like that. Juve's been linked to him. I do think. Uh, I mean, really, I just picture him right now wearing like an ac milan jersey and Mm -hmm. um, getting good vibes so something like that would be fun i think but uh ah, champions yeah sorry ac milan ac milan yeah they were serial champs Mm -hmm. there you go juve uh want to keep mckinney but apparently if they get pogba they might have to ship out mckinney so none of our players are really safe (laughs) right now um, as much as that sucks, we did have some good news though. Gaga Solonina, uh, if I said that right, right there, I feel like I just stuttered a bit, but uh, he is chosen 
the USA Logan. Uh, he had some blunders as the whole Polish thing started coming in. And I think he was just like, you know mm-hmm. what? Let's just nail it down now. I'm going with America. Let's get the distractions out of the way. And now I can focus on my game. And he had a good game this yeah. weekend. So I think I think that was a good move for him. And hopefully, you know, I, I don't know if that means he's going to be in the World Cup picture yet. But he's only like, what, 17, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. He's got time to really grow into this and maybe like a 2026 or 2030 uh <laughs> yeah 2026 2030 um time frame maybe for for a world cup for gaga what, what do you think of him uh making the announcement i, I mean i think it's big i uh, i the more the merrier in in this case i think i think if you got young talent i'm always in on the fact that if we can just collect more young talent i think we have a better chance of being a better team just because there's a bigger pool to select from and Gaga is uh, ha- he was having a spectacular season had a bit of a stumble there but like as a kid a teenager playing in a professional league uh, at the level that he is at a young age I mean it it's uh I think it's good for him and plus like you said I think the biggest thing for him is getting that distraction out of the way you know you've got the thing with Yunus Musa who you know, his decision was pretty quick too. Um, and, I, and another thing too, is I, I, I think we talked about this before, but I think Greg's ability to recruit young kids, I think he does a very good job with, he might not be tactically the best coach, but I do think the players like Greg. Uh, so I think that's, you know, always a benefit to have that in your corner, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I like the decision that he's made um, the Polish team, um, a decent team, but I think the U.S. for especially goalkeepers is more enticing for the kids, so um, it should be fun. Plus, playing here I think has a lot to do with it. I think he's you know he's played here, he's grown up here. Um, my cat enjoys Gaga. I think she, I'm going to name her Hazel Gaga Selena, Slonina. Um, so most people, yeah, I was going to say most yeah. people probably think it's a Lady Gaga, right? We're <laughs> Lady Gaga. That's what we're talking about. Okay, <laughs> that's Lady Gaga. Um, but yeah, Hazel, what's going on? We're having like a moment here with my cat. Sorry for the listeners, um, but my cat's just going wild. But yeah, no, I, I enjoy it. I think it's a good move, but I'm just excited for games, man. Uh, we got international games coming up that matter, Jordan, with Ukraine and Scotland, uh, Wales waiting in the wings. So we're going to get to know our group member here soon. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh yeah, we got the playoff, right? For the Ukraine, mm-hmm. Scotland coming up. So that should be fun. I guess we'll go over a little bit of the roster later on in this show here. Guy got not called in to it, but um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll take ahead and look at the U S roster in a little bit for, I guess, do you want to do that now? Or would you rather start off with the MLS stuff and then go into the U S men's? I feel like if we don't do the national team roster, we're going to forget about it. After we told people, that's true. It could be could be an issue. So let's go ahead and talk it over uh, for the June 2022 summer roster goalkeepers: Ethan Horvath, Zach Steffen, and Matt Turner. Defenders: George Bello, Reggie Cannon, Cameron Carter, Vickers, Aaron Long, Eric Palmer Brown, Anthony Robinson, Joe Scally. DeAndre Yedlin, Walker Zimmerman. The midfielders, Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams, Luca Della Torre, Weston McKenney, Jordi Mahalovic, Yunus Musa, Christian Rodon, and Malik Tillman. He is a uh, former German youth national that has committed to the U.S. Uh, filed his switch. Uh, forwards, Brendan Aronson, Paul Ariola, who's on fire. Uh, actually, no, he's on Dallas. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Azer Spera, uh, Jordan Morris, Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah, and Haji Wright. There's our 27 person squad. Now, what we've heard, there's been some rumors or reports that after some of these games, uh, after like the friendlies, but before the Nation League, you might see some of these players leave and more players get called in. So, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what I've heard on Twitter. Not like I have sources or anything. 
But uh, yeah, June first. That's coming up. Well, again, next week is uh, USA versus Morocco at uh, TQL Stadium in Cincinnati, seven thirty p.m. on ESPN and Unimas. And then uh, we have USA Uruguay at five o'clock on Fox on June fifth. And then we have the Nations League, June 10th against Granada, and uh, El Salvador on June 14th. We'll talk about those as it gets closer. But yeah, uh, Malik Tillman, Bayern Munich youngster, has played on the under-21s for Germany. He's making his switch uh, to the U.S. Um, actually, it looks like he played for – he definitely played for the – Oh, he did play for the U15 national team for us as well, and then also been on the youth national team set up for Germany. He's 19 years old. He made seven appearances in the Bundesliga this year for Bayern Munich and mostly spending time with Bayern too. I think that's most of the information we really have to have here. It's good to see Joe Scally get called in. He's had no appearances yet. Haji Wright is a new guy. Um, I yes. was just looking at his stats. 14 goals uh, in Turkey in the Super League uh, yep. for Turkey. So that's their he's top tier. pretty hot. Wow. I, didn't, I had no idea who he was. But he came from – it looks like he's played mostly in the German Bundesliga uh, youth systems. Yeah, his na- he's been a name for a while. Yeah. That people have been clamoring for. We just haven't gotten him. I feel yeah, he's 24. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember, look, I remember when he was on Schalke in 2017. Mm-hmm. Okay. I actually remember him on the Cosmos in 2015 as well. <laughs> but uh, I remember when he moved to Schalke and, you know, everybody was clamoring for him then too, but he just never made the impact that he has yeah. in Turkey, which is why now, of course, people are uh, clamoring for him to make an appearance. He's been a staple in the youth systems for the, uh, for the U.S., so it's good to see him get caught on. Hey, did you know he is related? By the way, third cousin is Joseph Adai, really a former running back for the yeah. Indianapolis Colts. Really, that's what that's it says on Wikipedia. Cool. <laughs> so <laughs> you know that could be changed, but that that's what I'm reading here. But yeah. either that or Haji got really bored <laughs> one night. It was like, yeah, that would like, be I'm fun. Make this up, yeah. <laughs> You know that Fox is going to be spilling that all over the the airways next week. Yes. You know. (laughs) Uh, I I did see a lot of Cincy fans not happy, um, which I think Jordan is. um, A lot of Cincy fans not happy? Why? Yeah, because Velasquez was not called in. I get it, but he's not in the same category of these forwards right now. Uh, Not even Haji? No, um, I would say it takes more to do it in Turkey than it does yeah. for most of the MLS. I, I don't know. I, I think Vasquez, we, we kind of get these players all the time, right? That'll mm-hmm. have a hot start. I look, I remember everybody clamoring, me included, for Jack McInerney to start for the U.S. when he was on this hot start for the uh union, what 2010, probably uh, 2011, somewhere around there. And he uh, got called in, I believe, didn't make it off the bench in camp, and then came back to the Union and had an awful second half of the season. So you, you sometimes get these players, is what I'm saying. So until they are able to start showing consistently that they're able to do this, I would lean against it. I'm not calling just giving generous call-outs to Brandon Vasquez for having a great start to the season I want to see him continue to have that and then have it again next year, and then maybe I can start calling him in. But I don't think he's the answer for, for 2022 Qatar. No, I don't think we have an answer for 2022. There might be one hidden, Jesus Ferreira. That, that, that's the one that I'm, I'm projecting. Jordan, May 24th, write it down. Uh, May 24th, Jesus Ferreira is going to be like a false nine starting nine come November. Write okay. it down after I it down. basically just called him a most average player in the world or something like that. Did you? Yeah, at the very beginning of the year. Let's not go back oh, and okay. revisit that. But I think it was more along the lines of maybe he's the average MLS player because he just hadn't shown that he was 
special. But it's pretty right. good though that like Jesus and Paul are playing together and playing extremely well. It helps. It helps when yeah. you call in both of them at the same time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's going to be helpful for them as sure. I mean, let me let me pull up Ariola's stats here. Um as we're just talking about it real quick, uh, he's got 11 starts, 12 games played, five goals, two assists. Okay. Uh, and he had last year, do you know how many goals he had last year? Six. Yeah. Are you looking it up? Yeah. Okay. Six and two assists. <laughs> okay. So he's already almost matching last, last year's production. Do you know how many he had in 2019? I'm not looking. Uh, three? Mr. Consistent, six goals and two assists. Okay. So, right, that's 2019. 2018, seven goals and six assists. Wow. His most goals in an MLS season that I can see here is seven. So he just needs three more, Logan. And we're only not even halfway through the season mm-hmm. to get a f- uh, record for him goals in a season. His most assists in a season is six. His average is about two. When I'm looking at these two, two, six, two, two, two on seasons, he had, uh, Oh, and guess what? In 2020, he played one game, no goals, no assists, only 22 minutes. And then of course, in Swansea, he played 18 minutes. So, He's on a different streak right now, and I think what I what I think about this right is he is and that's including his Tijuana uh, goals too. By the way, he's on another level right now, and I think it has to do with Dallas, and I think it has to do with that he's actually. I mean, he's still only twenty six years old. We kind of talk about Ariola like he's been around for a while because mm-hmm. he's been around since twenty thirteen when he was eighteen, breaking into Tijuana, and. He, Stayed in Tijuana until 2017, goes to D.C. for a year, goes back to Tijuana for a season, back to D.C. for three years, four years, and then to Dallas. And I think whatever is going on here, I think it for Dallas and for him, it's just like a perfect fit right now. And I think that is good for him. D.C. kind of just never had it together, Mm -hmm. right? Um, last year they were good, but they weren't as good as this Dallas team has been. And it's because they have this young talent. He has somebody he can feed the ball to. I mean, like I said, he already has two assists compared to the two assists he had last year. And he's getting good balls fed to him for him to be able to score five compared to those times in DC when his max was seven goals. 2018 was his best season with seven goals, six assists. Like I mentioned before. So his highest XG though is actually 2019 with 5.9. So he actually performed under his X. No, he performed over his XG on both those years. Cause he had six goals that year, but last year, his XG was 5.3. He scored uh, six goals right now. His XG is 2.7. He's performing at five. <laughs> You know, so mm-hmm. he, he's kind of way overperforming the XG this year. Uh, so we'll see how it goes for Ariola, but it is kind of interesting to see how he's doing compared to how he's done in this league in other seasons. And I think really his only experience in MLS has been DC United. It's good for him to kind of break free from there. And I'm sure DC is kind of wishing that they still had a hold of uh, Paul Ariola. Yeah, when you spend two million, what was it, two million dollars that Dallas sent towards DC because they were like, we need to get him out of that situation. And like you said, it was like this perfect mix of him getting in with a bunch of. I think it would have really hurt him, Jordan, if this team was young or older. But this team is like really young. Um, they've got a lot of young stars and a lot of young players that are coming up. Uh, guys trying to find their feet, like an Alan Velasco, uh, like a Jesus Ferreira, uh, Brandon Cervania. Like uh, you've got guys like that. Um, O'Brien, like they're they're relatively younger guys. They're on the younger side, and I think it helps when you get guys like that um, that are you know in the middle of their you know prime or right at the beginning of their prime, um, and surround Paul with them because I think Paul's got an extraordinary talent. I think um, if you just look at the numbers when he's played, uh, he seems to have had a lot of injuries. 
uh, during his time. Um, and then you take out like that weird two year gap where it was 2019, 2020, 2021, where it's just been kind of a weird go for Paul. You kind of remove those and he's been one of the most consistent players when you're talking about uh, numbers. And like you said, it's Mr. Consistent. Um, he seems to be extremely reliable. I think that's why Greg likes him so much. Um, and I know people get frustrated whenever they bring him on, but honestly, Jordan, like he's always struck me as somebody that he doesn't care how big the situation is. He's just going to go play. Uh, and, and I think that's kind of cool that he's got that ability to, and like you said, it feels like he's been around forever um, because it feels like way back in the day, even when I was still kind of just watching it casually, uh, the U S men's national team, it seems like he was in the ranks and files of the teams, the youth teams. So it was like, they knew this kid, uh, and I I had known – he was, like, one of the only names I had known uh, in MLS besides Jordan Morris. So, um, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to see him take off with Dallas. I hope it keeps up. I hope he stays healthy. That's a big concern with him because um, he, if he and Jordan stay healthy, I mean, they're, they are consistent role players on this U.S. men's national team and obviously with the Sounders in Dallas. Stars on their side, but not. Yeah. Let's get into, I guess, the MLS here. Uh, we got midweek and weekend games to kind of go over. So we'll just kind of do what we did last week and look over the uh, tables and just kind of talk about the last, you know, like the form of the teams and results that have happened. But try not to spend, you know, all night saying, well, then this person scored in the fifth minute. And this, you know, like, just kind of go and. <laughs> You know, minute by minute here. Um, the Union have reclaimed the first position in the East. We'll start with the East, like we usually do. Uh, they go to Portland, Logan, and they're going to win 2 0. And they also drew with Inter Miami midweek. So that was a home game for the Union. Probably should have won that game. And but they go on the road and get the two the three points from uh from a two nil victory over Portland, which is kind of the spot where we thought the Union were going to lose if you're a Union mm-hmm. fan. So they they get back up to the top, but the issue is they have 24 points. NYCFC have 23 points, but Union have played 13 games. NYCFC have played 12, so uh, it's still going to be short lived up there. I would think, as NYCFC has really shrugged off the rust from the CCL and have now really taken it uh, to MLS here. They beat Chicago Fire 1-0, uh, which, you know, like I said, Gaga uh, played well, but still finishes 1-0 for NYCFC. And I, I just can't help but think, you know, this was a 23rd minute penalty kick for Hair Bear. But uh, other than that, pretty good. Chicago Fire, three saves. He was three for three, Gaga. So that that's pretty good. But you just wonder on both ends here. NYCFC is going to take over that East soon. But also Chicago Fire are, are just pitiful. Right now, Shakiri has finally scored again uh, in the midweek game against the Red Bulls to move him to three goals. He is the leader of the team, Logan, with three goals. They have 17 goals that they've given up, but they've only scored 11. We've talked about that last week in depth, so we don't have to talk about it too much here. But th- this is just a-, a big issue for Chicago. Uh, so let's start though with your thoughts on, I guess, Philly or NYCFC before he moved to Chicago real quick. I mean, with Philadelphia, uh, here we go again, Ernst Tanner, uh, figuring out how to put together a, a team and got a guy, Daniel Gazdog, who, you know, nobody really considered to be much of a threat. He came in last year, kind of struggled. Um, I felt like he didn't quite, you know, it took that first year to get accustomed to the league. He started to come around as Philly was getting hot. And then now all of a sudden, Jordan, he's one of the most effective attacking players in the league. Um, and he's up there with guys like Hani Mukhtar, um, like the Castellanos. I mean, guys that you can, you, you look at highlights with the union and you, you think he's going to be in the stat sheet somewhere, whether it's going to be an assist, it's going to be a goal. Um, he just seems to have that knack. He seems to have that Philly ability. So again, I, it, 
there's not enough praise for what Philadelphia does. Um, we talk about this every week, uh, and I know <laughs> Extra Time's always getting blasted for it. Um, and there's a lot of other people that go. I mean, Philly fans, they'll let you hear about the fact that you're not talking about their teams when they're doing well. Um, also, when they're performing horribly, they want you to talk how bad they are because they like that kind of stuff too. Um, but with Philly, man, I, I, I think that this team is still a very good team. Um, yes, NYCFC is hot. But I don't know. I mean, if, if anybody's going to stave off the NYCFC, it's going to be uh, Philadelphia, just because I think their defense is much more stout. Um, and I and I think I'll take Jim Curtin over Ronnie Dyla every day. Um, that's just my opinion. But um, both really good teams. NYCFC, like you said, Castellanos is uh, – don't look now, but he's all of a sudden way back up into the golden boot chase. He's got seven goals. Um, and however – However, the international trade uh, or the transfer window, Jordan, opens June 10th. And you and I talked about this prior to the season that some of these NYCFC guys might not be around. And maybe Abear is part of that solution because I think you're trying to get him back and healthy after missing last year. But Jordan, are you, I mean, do you think Castellan, I, I don't, I don't personally think he finishes the season, not with the steam that he had going in. Do you think he finishes the season with NYCFC? And if not, are they as good as Philly? Jeez. Um, I think it's a possibility that he leaves, yeah. but I think they could go get another striker. Um, City money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not really sure if I can say for certain if they would be better than the union. What we still have a question mark on the union is that uh, Ura still hasn't really played much. That's true. Injured, apparently, I guess. Um, or I say there's not match fitness or something right now. Mm -hmm. He was injured before. But, you know, this is, uh, this is tough. MLS kind of goes in up and down, right? Uh, yeah. I do think it's funny though. Thank you for shouting out Gazdag. I don't think many people do really nationally. He's got the same amount of goals as Castellanos, Mahalovic, who everybody was raving about, Vasquez, Buxa, Jesus Jimenez of Toronto, and has the same amount of goals as uh, Ibobasi. Um, which, again, this is a uh, midfielder. You know, this is not yeah, a striker. No. Um, expected goals and expected assists. He's in the top six. Yeah, you know we got That's a really wild. great golden boot race right now because you have Hazard mm -hmm. Frere with nine, Jerusi with eight, and then you have a whole bunch of people with seven and sixes. Yeah. So this is uh, this has been a lot of fun uh, so far, as we'll see who can kind of keep it up and who not. But I don't think usually it's this close with this many goals no. uh, for some of these players. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is this has been a lot of fun so far. Um, and sixes too. Good lord. I think I think NYCFC is better than Philly right now. Okay. We'll see what happens with Castellanos. But, but Philly has really been in a slump. Even with only one loss, they've really been in a slump where they've drawn six games. They had drawn four in a row before that Timbers win. So uh, luckily they're kind of back on the mend, but we'll see how it goes from there onward. But, you know, with uh, NYCC having a game in hand, it was just a form that they've been in. It's really tough to see them not overcoming them. I and then, like, like I've said multiple times on the show, once you get into the summer – and we start getting windows where you can bring in somebody mm -hmm. and you can go on a run. It could change the whole shape of the league. So sometimes it's a little pointless even debating some of this stuff yeah, <laughs> because you don't know who's going to be that big target. that's going to come in and shake things up. That's true. Uh, but I, I guess, I guess we'll wait and see uh, in, in third place is Orlando city in the East. Um, two losses, two wins in their last five and a draw that was against Austin city. I mean, Austin city, Austin FC, which they just had a two nil lead mm -hmm. on Logan. Yeah. And, uh, two reds mm -hmm. for, uh, Orlando, no Schlegel bagel. Yeah. Schlegel, no Schlegel bagel. 
gets burnt. <laughs> a re- yeah, re- I was trying to find another rhyme for Slagle, uh, but being out, you know, uh, but there's nothing there. Uh, and then uh, say Cesar Araujo in the 69th minute getting mm-hmm. a, a red card. Slagle looks like it was a second yellow. Yeah. So uh, there you go. But Austin had a higher XG than Orlando anyway. Orlando performed pretty much to it. 1.9 XG, they got two. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty good for them. But having a two-goal lead and blowing it just doesn't seem like the mental fortitude, right, to see this game out. And getting two red cards, again, speaks to kind of that mental fortitude. I know... There was a lot of complaints with pro this weekend and the referees and VAR, but even then it it just really hurts your team. Mm -hmm. If you can't get this two nil result on the road, that that would have been helping out a lot for Orlando. They're at 21 points, add two more of those Logan and they're tied for second with Orlando. I mean with NYCFC, but they would still be sitting third because of goal differential, yeah. but but you get my point. They mm-hmm. would be a little closer than they are now. Are you at all worried about Orlando going on? It kind of seems like maybe it's that time of year again. I'm not really sure. It's over. We are screwed. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> um, to like you said, I know it's on the road. It's at Austin. Austin can score in bunches when they get going too. They've got a good attack. Um, they're a good team this year. Yeah. Um, but again, like you, you said, if you look at expected goals, it's like 14 for Orlando. That's my concern. We're just, we just don't score and we don't have, we keep buying these strikers um, in, in hopes that they work. We kind of piece, you know what it feels like, Jordan? It feels like a really baby version of the U S men's national team. It seems like we've got really good pieces in and around the midfield. We've got okay defenders, but there's always, you know, one that's hurt. And then we've got the front line that they never score. Not, at least not consistently. Kara is getting to that point where he's getting more consistent. I think next year will be the year he takes off. But right now, Orlando is a very average team. I don't think we're a top four team in the East, if I'm being completely honest with you. I think the defense is going to sl- you know, slumber into the, the end of the year. It's summer here in Orlando. It's going to be hot. There's going to be a lot of draws. Um, we're going to lose points. Um, it's not easy to play here, even with the home team. Um, I've been to multiple games where it's just like a standstill because it's like an oven. So yeah, I'm not confident. Like if I had to pick a team seriously in the Eastern conference, top five, that was the weakest it's Orlando. Um, as much as they, you know, have as far as points are concerned. Um, it, it just, it seems like they started well, defended well. And now it's, it's like, it's that same thing as last year where they just get into the summer and it's just going to start to fade. I wouldn't be shocked if they do drop. Um, They're only a point ahead of CF Montreal um, and Red Bull. Uh, I don't know if Cincinnati is better than them right now. Um, They do give up a lot of goals, but they're scoring more than Orlando. So, yeah, it's brutal. It's uh, I can just feel it. I can feel it. Yeah, I I think the weakest part of Orlando right now is the goals, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, goals against only 17, right? Montreal has given up 23, but they've also scored scored 24. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you talked about Kara. He's the lead goal scorer. Three. Mm-hmm. There's got to be more ways. I, I don't know what Orlando needs to do to get yeah. more goals, but they need more goals, whether it's a new striker, whether it's a new attacker, midfielder, winger. Something mm-hmm. needs to shake this team up because – they're the only negative goal differential in the top five mm-hmm. right now. So you're right that theoretically, uh, I, I'd still say maybe Montreal is worse than Orlando or has the possibility of being worse than Orlando. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is because they give up so much goals, they might not be able to keep it up. Right. But Orlando, they're going to be in lots of nil-nils, one-ones, two-twos. Mm-hmm two ones one nil type of results here and that's that can go against them as much as it goes for them and i think that's what we're kind of seeing six wins four losses 
three draws. They're pretty evenly spread when you look at those numbers. Uh, and they're just I mean, not very really, good at home either. Like we, we've, we're the only yeah. team uh, in the top that really struggle at home. Like it, it's weird. Like the top four, we've got the worst record of the top four at home, three and three. Like I, we should have a huge advantage. Whereas NYCFC, they're six and one, one, uh, and the Union are three zero oh, and four. So it's like at least they pick up games. They don't really, you know. But Orlando, it just seems like we just get stuck. And it's like I don't really get how we're so bad and we get smashed at home it's not like those games are close <laughs> we always get smashed in at home so it's yeah i don't know it's not good speaking of montreal we kind of just talked about them but they have two straight losses they were once kings of the east for a bit they lose to nashville midweek and they lose to rsl on the weekend uh so not great for them right now uh, but Mahalovic has had seven goals scored. He is called into the U.S. camp. We kind of already talked about it, but good for them. Uh, we'll we'll kind of talk about who they have coming up here as well, but just need more defense, right? right? Mm-hmm. 23 goals given up. That's the highest uh, until Toronto with 25. So what that means is that, you know, the, I'm not sure they're going to be able to keep scoring to keep up with that. Um, So at some point they might start having a negative goal differential. It all depends on how well they start closing down the defense, but uh, not a good look right now for them. Like I said, it's second highest in the East with 23 and they're all the way up in fourth place. If they can sort out that they're going to get more wins, which means they're going to climb higher in the table. And if they can sort that out, you know, maybe we're talking about, next year a real good shot for them to make a run uh for a top spot in the east but i do think teams like the red bulls are going to be able to catch up to them but maybe they're able to catch up to orlando like you said so they're still in a play for a top four spot that's where they're currently sitting right now they just really need to sort out the defense uh the red bulls sit fifth that i just referenced there uh they have 20 goals for 14 against. They have 20 points, 13 games played. Montreal has 20 points with 13 games played. There's a four point gap from first to fifth, a five point gap from first to six. So it's really tight at the top. And really, this whole division, this whole conference is getting a little bigger than it was, right? Like, before we were talking about how there's like an eight point gap for uh-huh. the whole thing. There's now a 13 point gap from Chicago to Philadelphia. So it is starting to grow a little bit, but that top five is still only four points. And the top six is five points and it's eight points from first and seven. So right now uh, it could just take three games for a team to fall out from top to bottom, you know, of playoff spot. So that's where we are at uh, with with that Red Bulls kind of been all over the place. They've they started off really hot this year. They were great. They've had one win in their last five games. That goes all the way back to April 30th, almost a whole uh, month ago. Three straight draws, and two of those draws at home, and then a loss to Inter Miami on the road. Mm-hmm. Team that you really don't want to lose against lewis morgan is the top goal scorer for them but they sit fifth i don't know they they need to sort it out and i think they could actually be a top three team in the east what are your thoughts on the red bulls yeah i mean they defend really well um aaron long i mean he's had a really good season and that's really good for the u.s national team they're going to need some center back depth because they they just keep getting hurt um but no it it is a weird group though like it like they have it like started uh, on a high note and then it went through like this draw slumber and then they came out of it and now they're losing to, you know, a team like Inter Miami um, and, you know, Inter Miami's playing a little bit better than they have been. But again, I, I think eh, with Red Bull, I, I think you're right. I think if, if out of the top, you know, seven teams, if I said there was going to be a team that made a run up towards the top two uh, in Philly and NYCFC, because I think, much like last year, there was two are there to stay. I think Red Bull 
would probably be my pick um, just because I think they defend really well. Um, I think Gerhard uh, is a good coach. I think tactically he knows what's going on. Um, so I don't know. I like the press. I, I, I always enjoyed watching Red Bulls play um, just not against Orlando because they beat the hell out of them. Um, <laughs> we never play well against them. Um, but yeah, I, I think Red Bull, they finish in the top three. I'm going to, I'm going to say that now. I think they just do it. I think CF Montreal, I think, I'm going to keep saying CF Montreal um, is just, I think you said it, it, they just give up too much and there's no way they keep the pace of scoring those many goals. So yeah, I think it, Red Bull top three. I'm telling you, it's making me really excited for my uh, Red Bulls NYCFC yeah. be match fun. in July because man, we're going to be at Red Bull Stadium, Red Bull Arena, and uh, it's going to be just uh, maybe two very competitive teams going going at it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully they continue to battle it out so that game means a lot. I mean, it's still mid-July, but, you know, it, it's going to be a fun, fun derby. Uh, Cincinnati, still surprisingly sixth place. Six wins, one draw, six losses, 18 goals for, 21 goals against. Kind of mirrors... Uh, Montreal and Orlando with some of those goals. They just lost in New England 3-2 at home, but they had four straight wins before that. Brandon Vasquez leads the team with seven goals. They've just been a pleasant surprise this year, and I think with their uh, how many points? 19 points. they are eight points from, gold, uh, from Wooden Spoon right now. I th- I'm going to call it now. They're safe. No wooden spoon for Cincinnati this year. Do you agree? Yeah, no wooden spoon, but Jordan, I do think that they're overperforming uh, in the point category just because I'm looking at their wins now. They beat uh, Orlando, who suck. Um, <laughs> and Miami, they beat. Um, and that game was at home. Uh, their next win came against Toronto away, and then they hosted Toronto at home and beat them twice. They hosted Minnesota United, who's not playing that well so again i think a team that is not who hot and then they beat chicago um jordan the games they've lost lafc new england austin uh throw dc in there for fun uh they also lost to charlotte and montreal so those are good teams they drew against atlanta um i'm not sold on since he being a top seven team yet but yes they are much better and much more improved than last year. I love the way that this is going for them. Um, And I think they made a really good hiring choice. So again, I think Cincinnati, you're finally off the map. I think you are no longer the worst team, nor will you be going forward. A lot of union fans say that uh, (laughs) they definitely made a good hiring choice because some of them are missing Uh, Mm -hmm. Pat Noonan uh, right now with his role of what he did for the union, some people are saying that that role is not being filled as well right now. Yeah. That bench coach that's able to make adjustments, able to help the team. And I can see that, you know, but also, yeah, not sure if they are a top seven team. They might, I think they will fall out of a playoff spot. I I do believe that Atlanta or new England are probably getting one Mm -hmm. of these spots is my gut. Yeah. It's only a a four-point gap for some of these teams and only a three-point gap for Atlanta. Can I say this, though, Jordan? I think you made a really good point in saying that. Like, we're we're, we're May 24th, and I really do think from 10 down, have no shot. That's how bad those teams are. Let's take a look. 10 down, real quick. Uh, Miami, D.C., Columbus, Toronto, Chicago. Yeah, uh, I think... I think we've seen who the crew are, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are who they thought they were. <laughs> but, 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 it's three points for them it's to get true. into a playoff spot. So, so, yes, this happens all the time, right? There's this, this happens all the time. What I mean, like, there's there was a season, I think, in 2015, uh, <clears throat> off the top of my head, 2015 or 2016, where Chicago was very low mm-hmm. but still not mathematically eliminated for 
quite some time. And you just knew the whole season. They didn't actually have a shot, right? But but mathematically, they did have a shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, th- that's kind of where it where it all comes down, right? Because when I'm looking at this team right now, Chicago, they're mathematically alive. Mm-hmm. They don't have a shot. And I agree with what you said about most of these teams here. Um, most of them, Toronto, Chicago, I would say Miami and D.C. I have no faith and making a playoff spot. I'll hold out for the crew just because of Porter's history, mm-hmm. just because they won MLS Cup two years ago. But if they keep performing at the level they are, there is no way they will. And 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 for sure Toronto and Chicago, because if we look mm-hmm. at their last five games, they each have four wins and a draw in their last five. That's not enough to get there. You think Insigne's right. calling going, is there any way that we can cancel the pre-contract? Like, is, is there, like, <laughs> something I can no, do? No, he wants that money, man. <laughs> uh, he's going to want that money. But yeah. th- the best thing about it, right, is Insigne will infuse something into this team. It's mm-hmm. not going to be enough to get them a playoff spot. But I think it will be enough that you might be able to see a glimp, like a glimpse. Mm-hmm of what they can be with another year of Bob Insigne and maybe bringing in a couple more players that really rounds that team out. And I, I, that's where I think it can go, but yeah, most of these bottom teams right now, while mathematically alive are not great. And if we want to throw in crew Miami and DC as well, all three of those actually oh this is perfect all three of those last five logan have two losses two draws and a win in their last five Mm. so i think you're right i i do think the playoff teams are going to come from nine and up yeah and we'll figure out who those are but when you're just looking at the last five, that that almost looks like enough to tell you who's really doing well and who really isn't doing well. Atlanta isn't doing well either. They also have two losses, two draws, and a win in their last five. But they're higher on points. They're technically tied for seventh, just losing it out on the goals. Four? No, how, how are they not? How are they ranked on this FB ref? That's what I want to see. What do you show them on an MLS site? Do you have that up? I have. What are you looking for? Their goal? Atlanta. What place? Eighth? Oh, yeah. Eighth. How do they go by wins? Oh, yeah. They go by wins. Okay. That's what it is. Oh, because Atlanta has less wins than Charlotte, which is why Charlotte's above them. Because the goal differential is better for Atlanta. The goal scored is better for Atlanta. So I actually do believe in Atlanta being able to overtake Charlotte there. But just going back to the bottom, Miami, D.C. crew not doing well in their last five. That's why they're down where they are. And then Toronto and Chicago are for sure out of it. I'll I'll go that far. I'll say for sure those two are out of it. Yeah. But I've seen some crazy things happen, but I don't think Miami, D.C., or crew are going to have any sort of mid-season, uh, mid-season magic. magic or moves that are mm-hmm. going to propel them to a playoff spot like a Ladero in yeah. the 2016 Seattle. Yeah, I agree with you on the 13-14. Uh, Toronto, Chicago, they're, they're atrocious. Like, they're just – Chicago doesn't score at all, uh, nor do I think they'll fix that. And then Toronto, they give up more goals. They they just got that defense that just isn't working, and that's a big issue because that's not a quick fix, I don't think. And that's something that they're going to have to address June and on. I think that's where they have to go add. So it's really strange, though. Like you would think Mavinga and um, Salcedo would have been a good fit together, but I guess. 
I don't know. It's very strange. I mean, Mavinga's only played four games, but well, that might be the issue. But they just don't have any consistency in the back. Uh, anything else on the East, or are we ready to move west? Do the West. Yeah, let's go West. Sorry if we didn't go in depth on your team. It's just we are moving on to the West, or else we could do a whole show on the East. On the West, we have LAFC sitting top with 26 points, 13 games played. Austin is second with 24 points in 13 games played. Dallas sit with 22 points out of 13 games played. RSL, 22 points out of 13 games played. LA Galaxy have now slipped to fifth place. 13 games played, 20 points. Nashville, up to sixth place, 13 games played, 19 points. Houston Dynamo currently resides seventh with 18 points, 13 games played. Minnesota and Colorado both have 18 points out of 13 games played as well, but sit eighth and ninth. The Timbers toiling around in 10th place, 15 points, 14 games played. San Jose sit 13th, I uh, sit 11th with 13 Matches played, 14 points. Seattle in 12th with 11 games played and 13 points. They have two games in hand of most teams and three games in hand of a couple. And Sporting KC sit 13th with 14 games played, 13 points. Vancouver sit 14th with 12 games played and 11 points. So where do we want to start, Logan? Where do you want to look at here for the West? I mean, we can start at the top because I think LAFC's got an interesting dynamic. I, the Vela sixth goal over the weekend. Um, Brian Rodriguez is coming back, which adds a whole different element to that LAFC team. Um, an LAF, LAFC team that has 26 goals, almost top of the West, just behind Austin uh, by one goal. So adding another element back to that attack after an injury um, for Brian Rodriguez, who was really good last season. Um, I mean, this, this is, Jordan, I think, a, an LAFC team. You and I were talking about that, whether Steve Chirondolo was going to be, you know, the guy that ultimately writes the ship. And I had a major doubts. I know you were much more like, no, he was, the, he, you know, I think he's got the abilities. He was a great player um, and really has the abilities to lead. Um, and I think you saw it more so than I, um, probably the most, because I know a lot of people are in that same boat of doubting him. But, man, this has been – they've been fun to watch. Um, they kind of look like that scary team they once were. Maybe not as potent because Vela's not having a tear of a season. But, man, if that sixth goal means anything to him, um, this could get ugly for the rest of the league because he could just absolutely tear this conference apart. Um, we'll see how they do. They've kind of struggled here lately, but – um, I think they're starting to head in the direction where they're one of the top teams in this league again. For sure. Uh, I mean, they sit two points clear of any other challenger. Philadelphia has kind of caught up with them in Austin a bit um, after Austin had two straight losses and even LAFC had had two straight losses to Austin and to Colorado. But, uh, yes, LAFC, 26 points. Trundolo having a hell of a job so far for LAFC, really turning that team quite around. And, you know, we've talked about it's not official yet with the Vela continuing on, but I'm assuming that's going to be finished sooner or else his contract runs out at the end of June. Mm -hmm. um, some people say he hasn't really been DP caliber and, Probably true, yeah. but uh, six goals, still how you shake it, pretty darn good when you're looking at Hani Mukhtar and CJ Sapong both with four for Nashville, Chitarito with five, right? So th there is, when you're comparing them to some of the other Western Conference uh, MVP candidates or people that were favored for MVP, I would say, um, Still doing better than them right now. But uh, not as good as like a Jerusi, you know, no. uh, which is what has propelled <laughs> Austin 
so much right now. Who sit second? Uh, and had drawn against Orlando, had a comeback that helped gain them a point, or else they'd be three back of LAFC. Austin has scored more than LAFC and given up the same amount, so they're actually pretty even when it comes to, especially even the XG uh, is, is only one point seven difference. So uh, Austin doing a really good job this season. And uh, that part of it probably just has to do with Jerusi's really been great. Shipping off Ponchettino, who uh, really didn't seem like he wanted to be here. And I think when you can get those type of players out of the locker room, I think that can help propel it you know, a great deal. And bringing in a player like Max Arruti, who's been good at other clubs and kind of just understands his assignment and what to do has been great for them as well. Yeah. Duluth Cecilio um, for, I'm assuming was now forever. I'm not, I haven't followed that too much, but um, it, four matches. So I'm assuming he's gone for good. And I know he had, what was it? Off field issues. We assumed he came back. Off-field. I thought did he? I don't know. He was I, back I, to training. But I don't know how much I hadn't followed that too much. Um, but again, he's been missing from their side and they're still all the way up second, uh, all the way up to second. Their biggest thing, I think uh, last year we kind of talked about it was they, they really had a hard time scoring. And once Jerusi came, it was like the floodgates opened. And now frick this team, I mean, they defended way better than I think most people thought Alexander ring is phenomenal any anything he does um on the pitch is just phenomenal um and so yeah i think i don't know i really enjoy watching them it'll be interesting to see how the heat affects them too uh, i know teams that play in the heat it seems to be harder on them and the bodies so we'll see what the austin heat does to them but playing in that stadium man they they freaking the place comes unhinged at times so fc dallas at third as i said earlier and guess what uh Lost two straight. If they could have won those two games, Logan, they'd be sitting <laughs> top of That's the West wild. right now. So, Gosh. they're they're playing well, but they just need to uh, beat the teams. And here's who they lost to: they lost to Minnesota, and they lost to Vancouver. Yeah, uh, Vancouver is not a team you should be losing against right now. Only. Mm-hmm only three teams have <laughs> so <laughs> that is uh yeah you you would want to be able to beat them and even then you'd be sitting second place right now and the other team is minnesota who's a uh, challenging uh for a playoff spot but you would think with how well they've been especially with it have been a home game for them in dallas You'd want them to get those three points if you're a Dallas fan, but still better than I think most people anticipated FC Dallas. Uh, RSL sit fourth, 22 points. Great two straight wins. They beat Austin and they beat Montreal, so they've beat two really good teams. They lost to Nashville uh, the week before, uh, who's up there as well. So they're having a a pretty tough stretch of the schedule here. Here was their schedule. Sporting Kansas City, who's all the way in 13th. But then Seattle, who, regardless if they're sitting 12th, are mm. CCL the champs. Cap, yeah. Right? And then you have a, law, a win against the Galaxy as well. And then the two losses to Vancouver. Uh, uh, sorry, that's Dallas again. Why, why did my computer do that? Okay. Here is their schedule. Portland Timbers, nil-nil with them. RSL, one nil over the Galaxy. A loss against Nashville, and then Austin and Montreal. So they've had a pretty good schedule mm-hmm. right here that they're, that they're going through, and they're coming out pretty on top. Galaxy, meanwhile, have slipped to fifth place. They've had three losses in their last five, including a draw and a win. That win against, surprisingly, Austin FC. Uh, but they lose to Houston Dynamo 3-0, and they draw with Minnesota one one on the eighteenth. They just gotta find a way into the playoffs. They can't let it slip again, Logan. They they can't. I don't know, man. They might. Uh, Chicharito hasn't scored since April 9th. 
um, which is a whole awful stretch. And he's played every single game. He came in as a sub the last game. I think Chicharito gets to a point right around this time of the year where he needs more breaks because he is on the upper side of his career. So I think they give him a break. But, man, Jordan, they, they, they struggle. And they did last year, too, except now they really can't. They don't have anybody to rely on. Like, they don't have a legit um, – like, it, it just – they don't have those guys that can kind of step in and say, hey, uh, Zubak or whatever his name was. Was it Zubak? What is that? that feels right, right? Okay. You think um, Zubak? Yeah. They had guys that, you know, stepped in when he wasn't scoring and could score goals. But this year, man, they've been brutal. The, the next leading scorer on their team is Douglas Costa, who's got two goals, um, who people thought was going to tear up this league. And he's just not really – like he's, he's decent, but he's not – again, you and I talked about this at the beginning. We thought he was on the side of his career where there wasn't just much that he could really add, I think. Um, they, you know, and, I, and I think that's their big issue. They just don't have that firepower that you would expect um, in L.A., and that's been their biggest issue. And, and they don't look good. Like they don't look uh, – three losses in their last five. So, yikes, collecting only four points out of a possible 15. And slipping, and you can't slip in that conference because you know who's lying in the weeds. You've got Nashville right in behind you. You've got the Dynamo who are playing better, um, and then you've got teams like the Timbers and Seattle that there's no way that they're out of the playoffs. I don't think not not when it comes time for those two to kind of pull together. All right, uh, Nashville six, nineteen points. They're, they're doing well. They drew with Atlanta, though, at home, but they beat Montreal at home. Uh, they lose to Houston on the road, beat RSL at home, drew with Philly at home. So since they've been home, no losses. So pretty good. I mean, they, they have a loss, again, that was Houston on the road. But other than that, they've been – any game that's been at home, they haven't lost yet. Pretty good for, for Nashville as they navigate their first year in the West – I don't think there's really much to say about them right now. They're we're still kind of figuring out how that's going to go with them switching conferences. I think the biggest thing with them, nine games away already, they only had four games at home. So that could be huge. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Th- th- yep. That'll help them for sure. Yep. Help climb the table. Houston seventh with 18 points, Minnesota, Colorado as well. Really? Any of those three can make the playoffs i Mm -hmm. it's just somebody's gonna want it somebody's gotta want it okay is the thing with them because they both have two or three losses for all three of these teams in their last five so nobody's really jumping up saying i won in the playoffs right now we'll see who can turn it on in that time But Minnesota got out of a three straight losses stretch as they draw with the Galaxy and beat Dallas on the weekend. So they're turning it around. Uh, The Timbers sit 10th. They just lost to the Union, and they lost to San Jose. Before that, they beat uh, the Sporting Kansas City 7-2 last time we spoke. But since then, Mm -hmm. 3-2 lost to San Jose and 2-0 lost to Philly. So... They're in some trouble. They've played the most games in the West. Is Geo in the hot seat? No, I don't think so, just because they made MLS Cup. Yeah. I saw a bunch of stuff going around on Twitter of like people wanting his head. <laughs> I was like, I'm sure I don't know. they I don't do. Think it's fair. Uh, like, I don't think it's fair to him right now. Either. Yeah. We'll, I, we'll one, see how it shakes out, I guess. Right. Like, you you lose guys and then you've got to replace uh, a lot of injured players, a lot of aging players too on his roster. Hey, do like, you know who like they could a... use right now? Who's that Jordan? Jeremy Abobasi, who sits with San Jose in 11th, but Abobasi with seven goals. Portland's lead goal scorer is uh, Tolomo with four. Jordan, you know who so... else they could use? Like the Phenom guy, right? He's like the LeBron James of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to be going to Portland. uh, (laughs) San Jose, 11th. They're they're there. I don't think there's much to say about them right now. 
they can conceivably make a run now that they don't have Almeida, but we'll we'll see how it goes. They're uh, four points shy of a playoff spot. Seattle sit 12th. Uh, they're going to have to turn it on, man. They had the two straight wins against Minnesota and Houston, but then they lose to the Rapids. It's not good. Their lead goal scorers, Rui Diaz and Christian Roldan with two goals. CONCACAF Champions League is over. The hangover should be over. You're going to have to turn it around if you want to make a run in MLS, but I'm sure most Seattle fans will say, hey, we're good. Yeah. We just won the Champions League. God, Cascadia is awful this year. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah Vancouver all the way in the bottom. Uh, they're all 10 and below. Ooh. And Sporting sit 13th. They've played the most games as well. Not really much to say about them. They did win against the against the Rapids midweek, but they draw with San Jose uh, on the weekend. So there's your there's your West. Let's take a look at the games of the week coming up. It's time for the Match of the Week preview. We've got Open Cup games resuming tomorrow, May 25th, Wednesday. We have, uh, these are all on ESPN+, Plus. Louisville versus Nashville at 7 o'clock. Orlando hosting Miami at 7 NYCFC hosting New England at 7.30. Minnesota hosting Omaha at 8 o'clock. New York Red Bull hosting Charlotte at 8 o'clock. Kansas City hosting Houston at 8.30. And we have LA Galaxy and LAFC for El Trafico at 10.30 in the U.S. Open. That's fun. And Sacramento Republic for San Jose at 10.30 as well. Some good matchups there. We also have some Canadian championship stuff going on right now. Halifax against Toronto going on as we speak. Pacific FC facing off against York. And then tomorrow, Montreal versus Forge FC. And Calvary versus Vancouver. What's the uh, what's the best matchup for the Open Cup tomorrow? Ah, oh, it's definitely El Trafico, right? <laughs> like that's a that's a crazy draw for El Trafico. I'd say up, yeah, up there. Like it, it's. I definitely... think it's interesting, but yeah. I just worry that they won't play their stars. Who are you looking forward to? Orlando Miami is fun, but I think mm-hmm. I'm actually Kansas City Houston. That's a big rivalry. Um, used to be against each other in the playoffs all the time. I think that'd be a fun one. Mm-hmm. But actually, if I really had to pick, I really like Sacramento Republic and San Jose. Sac Republic was going to be coming into MLS, then they had that whole issue. Mm-hmm. I think they're also kind of like a local. They're, Sacramento's closer to San Jose, I think. Yeah, it is. So mm-hmm. that that's a fun little matchup as well. Plus, any time a USL team is, is battling out, like Louisville, Nashville is fun as well. Mm-hmm. I just named half of the games. Okay. Saturday at 6 o'clock, Logan, on your favorite place to watch a game, Twitter, or <laughs> Unimas TUDN, it's LAFC versus San Jose. Then Atlanta versus Columbus at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. New York Red Bull versus DC United, also on ESPN+. Plus. That's at 7 Toronto versus Chicago at 7 on ESPN+. Plus. Montreal versus Cincinnati at 7.30. New England versus Philadelphia at 7.30. Orlando hosts Dallas at 7.30. That should be interesting. Miami and Portland at 8 o'clock. Minnesota NYCFC at 8. Colorado versus Nashville at 9 o'clock. SKC and Vancouver at 9 and. RSL versus Houston at 9.30. All those games on ESPN Plus except for that Unimas game. Then on Sunday, uh, LA Galaxy versus Austin on Unimas, TUDN and Twitter. And then Seattle 
hosting Charlotte at 930 on FS1. All right, what's your game of the week out of these? I want to go Montreal, Cincinnati. Um, you've got number four and number six in the East. I think it would be fun to see Cincinnati match up against a team that's sitting currently in the top four. I know you and I just talked about the fact that Cincinnati might not have played the most tough schedule. Um, so getting to see uh, Cincinnati um, not only get to play against Montreal in like kind of a playoff setting, but also get to visit Montreal. Um, let's see what let's see what Cincinnati's made of. I want to see um, if that team really has the the Gustavo to kind of take down the big uh, monsters of the East. And Montreal is a good test for them. Also, I like to see Jordy Mihailovic play. Um, so MVP candidate possibly going up against the Golden Boot winner question mark Brandon Vasquez. Um, so yeah, no, I'm excited for that one. I think it'll be an interesting one. Uh, in the East. So looking forward to those two teams clashing. Well, you know me, I am a sucker for the Western conference and LA galaxy. Austin seems really fun Mm -hmm. on Sunday at six o'clock, especially since galaxy had just beat Austin and they will need to, to really start gathering some momentum again. Uh, I'll just shout out both Sunday games because I like seeing Charlotte on the field and, you know, they're going to be going to Seattle for the first time. That'll be wild. And Seattle really needs some points. A home game against an expansion team, you should get three points, Seattle. And mm-hmm. if you don't, I am ready to write them off for the whole season. I really am. I'm thinking at this point they're, they've they got the hangover. They're thinking mm-hmm. they're done with CCL, and that might be it for them for this season. And uh, that's fine. I do think that's fine for them, but uh, hopefully they don't have that same approach next season all right i think that about wraps up everything we have here all right if you want to follow the podcast on twitter instagram or facebook we're at stateside show for all those things or you can email us stateside show at gmail.com well I think that's about it, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else. We got U.S. games coming up, but we'll be back next week before that happens. Logan's going to be going to England at some point. Yeah. Next Monday will be my last show for a while. There you go. I'm kind of used to it by now. Wow. Yikes. (laughs) And not only is Jordan not going to be alone, or not only am I leaving, but Jordan won't be alone. So maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. I'll have to work it out. Yeah. We'll have Matt on. I haven't asked yet. I haven't. I haven't. I'll ask Matt. Done the due diligence of yeah. getting somebody over here. I'll email some people for you. Sure. Just random people that know nothing about hey, MLS. Hey, host one of the. I'll have the yeah, red guys on or SKC. They can have co-host. We'll see. Well, we'll try to get some. If not, you're gonna hear my boring voice times by itself but if you listen to our other shows you already know how that sounds if you listen to, to, to the infinity saga and beyond or uh geez any of the other million podcasts we have here on mm-hmm. log jam media but that about wraps us up i hope everyone has a great rest of their week And we'll catch you next time when we talk about the Open Cup and talk about the weekend action. So take it easy. See you next time. Steel Curtain's still in in Pennsylvania, but it's in Philadelphia instead. Stumbled over your own words. Damn. (laughs) 